the video is going to start in just a second, but we wanted to take a moment to say thank you because something very exciting has happened quite a lot faster than we thought it was going to. A million subscribers. Yes, Throttle House is now at one million subscribers on YouTube, and we have everyone to thank for that. Everyone, because it's very easy just to credit the two of us because we're the only people you see on camera. But a massive thank you goes out to the manufacturers and dealers that lend us cars, owners that entrust us with their own vehicles on the road and on the track. And even though it's small, we have an amazing team behind us and family members that put up with all of our crap. But of course, none of this will be possible without you watching. We have some really exciting stuff planned and some really exciting stuff that's, that's not planned yet. But in the meantime, enjoy 12 minutes of James and I making fun of each other. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And we're at the Throttle House test track for a drag race. Sweet. Just in case. Look at that! This race makes no sense. But it's the one that you've all requested more than any others. And we'd be lying if we said that James and I hadn't debated its outcome ourselves. This is reliable top-down motoring meets whatever that thing is. Hey. Oh shush, you know it's true. It's not. <laughs> okay, this is a big deal. Biggest drag race of the year. M3 versus Miata. Now, this is my E46 M3, which is, uh, I'd like to say that Myself and Speed Academy, who I bought it from, the YouTube channel, Speed Academy, I brought it back from the dead. It's got 300,000 kilometers on the clock, which is a lot for an M3, by the way, which means that the engine isn't really that healthy. I just installed a catch can. I redid the head gasket this spring. Uh, you can actually see the whole story of this car on my personal Instagram, Thomas Holland underscore TH, I think. And uh, yeah, you can see that it's basically done nothing but give me problems since I purchased it. But that is the BMW way. Okay, this is exciting. We're in our own cars. Race of the convertibles. Notably, only one of these is supposed to be a convertible. This one. I'm excited though. And you know what? Like, I know he's got more power, but he's got more weight. This does 0 to 60 in four Mississippis. It's really quite peppy when it wants to get to it. It's the ND1, so it's the 2016, so it's 155 horsepower. But I'm hiding some secret weapons, and I don't mean a supercharger. I have uh an aftermarket wind blocker i have that's not going to help me is it i have a steering wheel that's aftermarket it's very nice also not going to help me going to keep me on the straight and narrow though uh i do have an exhaust an axle back which makes a nice noise probably gives me another 700 horsepower maybe two and this car is wrapped in blue that uh, won't help me either because his is blue all right plan a Hopefully his car breaks. Now, I have 8,000 RPM. I have a 333 horsepower naturally aspirated inline six with independent throttle bodies and James has a little pithy four cylinder. However, his car is a lot lighter than mine and this is the convertible M3, so it's heavier to begin with. And then there's a roll bar that you can see, which is even heavier. So I'm safe, but slow. Now we've installed track wrap on our cars, which is a product made by Expel, which is really cool. They sent us a whole bunch of it and they supported us in this video. It's, it's pretty easy to apply. I suck at it a little bit, but as you get better at it, you can make it almost completely invisible. So by the time I got to the other side of the car, it was, you can't even tell it's there. It's really nice. And you just take it off at the end of the day and it protects your car. It's really, it's a, it's a good idea actually for track days. Autocross, especially if you do a lot of autocross, because it's easy on, easy off. Now, traction control is off. I'm going to launch it about on this surface, two to three thousand rpm anymore and it just lights up the rear tires um i do have a fire extinguisher because uh the, the the valve cover gasket was going and it was dumping oil on the exhaust manifold and i think i fixed it i was getting a little bit of excess crankcase pressure and the uh the the pcv valve went i think that the aftermarket um intake manifold uh, uh, boots are crap and they're causing a small vacuum leak which causes the idle to stutter every once in a while which is maybe getting some weird air to fuel ratio issues um it's it's, it's a work in progress it's, it's a work in progress it's a work in progress oh uh, this is uh this is an s54 
uh, E46M3, really a, a, a staple in the BMW car world. It, it harks back to a time where BMWs were all about performance and, uh, and I got a convertible. Okay, there's no way I can lose this. There's no way I can lose this. <laughs> Okay. Go. Oh, I had to shift. Oh, we're neck and neck. Good shift. Oh, I gotta shift more than he does. I need more RPM. And horsepower wins. Bye bye, Miata. Oh, he's taking it. 8,000 RPM. Woo! Oh, it's shaking on the braking there. There's my armrest. <laughs> oh. oh, that was pretty close. It was not pretty close. I that was it. That was two Miata car said, lengths. Can you hear the one normal car length? One normal. Car <laughs> How much did that cost again? If you were to buy it from me today, I think I bought it for 32. Okay. So I'd sell it to you for 35. That's fair. But well, probably, I, this was sold to me for, for $12,000. How much money have you put into it? I don't want to talk about that. How many days is it I don't want to talk on the about road? That. I don't want to talk about that. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. It's money at the outset. That's the that's only thing anybody counts. All right, let's give you one more win. Let's give you the roll. Okay. And then let's do the race that really matters because none of this stuff is real world. The other one that we're going to do. What, what race is, is that? What are you talking about? You'll see. You'll see. All right, roll race. Now, this is where his weight and his launch control is going to, and his horsepower. Yeah, I'm, I'm in real trouble. <laughs> but by how much? You know, we all get in trouble, but it's the amount of trouble you're in that's the value. I'm um, screwed. Okay, here we go. Okay, second gear for the roll. And go. Oh, we're neck and neck, but then I need to shift. Tall gears help. He doesn't need to shift. <laughs> Woo! Oh. There's my armrest again. <sighs> that is not as fast as it should be. What are you talking about? If I wasn't shifting... I was holding back. You were holding back? Yeah, I wanted to make it closer for the audience. Did, were you holding back because the car feels warm in places that it shouldn't feel warm, or...? No, I mean, I do have the, air, the, the fire extinguisher. It I is, only it. lose to you when, you shi when I shift. When you shift? Yes, it's part of racing. You have to, I also have to shift. Right, but you have an 8,000 RPM Yes. Line. So if I was shifting at the exact same time as you, science says... No. That I would win. No, that's not how... Okay. All right, what's this other race that you have in mind, by the way? Well, this is, again, as I said, this is the one that is really the only real life important one. Because you don't drag and roll race on public roads. Of course But not. what you, you do, do that. normally do, is yes. race to put the roof up and then do drag races. <laughs> so we're going to do a race where I have to put the roof up and then, I, and then I go. So we both have to put, what are the rules? So the roof, roof has up, to go. Roof up, windows all the way up. Windows and then, all, you can and then we can go. Yeah. Okay, you're on. All right, let's see what the S54 does then. Okay, windows all the way down. I'll say go and we'll go. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Ready and go. Right there, little, little casual case. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, come on, come on. Oh, he's catching up with me. Come on. No, he's not. Wind up, up, go up, windows. God, the window regulators are kind of dying in this. They're taking a long time. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, what an empty drag strip. That's the finish line. Alma Cross. He might be past the finish line already. And there you go. You can't possibly buy an M3 convertible. Come on. If he had bought his actual dream car, he would be racing here in an E46 coupe that he'd never have to put the roof up on, and he would have won. 
and across the line. Ah, yeah, now I lost. I lost that. But alas, he bought a piece of absolute. Hey, hey. Uh, yeah. Where were you? Well, I mean, I, I did the race. I should have come back and met you, given you a push. There's a good chance that you could make it to the finish line, turn around, and come back the start line before I finish. I almost want to try that. <laughs> but we're not going to. But then we did. And the rules are, in order for me to win, I have to cross the finish line, turn back, and then cross the start line before Thomas even sets off. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. On your mark? Yep. Get set? Yep. Go! Come on. Come on. Here we go. Not worried about the drift because I got the track wrap. That's why I put it on the side. What are you, what are you, no, go. What is it, what is happening? No, no, why my window's not going? Okay, there's the finish line. Coming in. He hasn't moved yet! Oh, he just set off! <laughs> and you lose! Three seconds too late. Three seconds too bloody late. All right, I guess you can get an E46 M3 in a convertible. Not! I didn't, I was far away. Is your car on fire? My tires were. Celebratory donuts. All right, three wins to Thomas. That's right. What's up? One win to James. Goodbye. Ask any Miata owner. All they need is one win to be happy. That's all they need. Damn it. I was getting a little bit of excess crankcase pressure and the, uh, the, the PCV valve went, so I had to fix that. Also, there's this weird noise at about 3,000 RPM, which is like a juddering kind of like weird shake noise. I don't really know what it is. And then at about 5,000 RPM, there's a buzz. I think that the lightweight flywheel that was installed wasn't, uh, wasn't locked in quite perfectly or it has come loose because that's causing an issue. Also, the rear differential is really tired, so on tight corners it rubs a little bit but it still seems to fully lock up even though I think one of the pinion bearings is going is it's making a whirring noise at high speeds also I'm getting a, a lot of blow by is the the piston rings are definitely on their way out so I have uh, installed a catch can to try and get the extra blow by so it doesn't have to go back into the intake also I think that the aftermarket um, intake manifold uh, uh, boots are crap and they're causing a small vacuum leak which caused the idle to start